Bell here on Borough TV. It's a pleasure to catch up with the uh, past players and officials association and the president of said association is Graham Clark. Graham, great to have you along on Borough TV. Thanks very much. Great to be here at the G. Just before we do get into that, that's a special night, isn't it, for the Port Melbourne Football Club? A rare privilege of playing on the MCG. Well, it's been what a long, long time, 1940, 41, since we played here in a couple of grand finals. So, very long time. Special memories uh, on this ground, but let's first of all talk about what's coming up with the uh, Players Association. First of all, there's a few reunions happening this year. Yep, we hope to have one against uh, Williamstown when they come over to Port. Um, but our big major function will be August the 30th, a Friday, our luncheon, which will be our 10th annual Friday luncheon. And of course this year we, we'd like to honour the members of the 1953 Premiership side, which means it's... Uh, What's that, 60 years ago? So that should be something very special. My famous name, of course, in that, Frank Johnson Sr., AFL Hall of Famer, uh, still looking fit as a fiddle. Yeah, legend. No? He's not, not ageing at all, Frankie. No, we'll certainly be targeting Frankie to be there, so it'll be great. Yep. For those that don't know, well, what's some of the work that the Past Players Association does through the year, and how does that help the club? Yeah, look, we, we have a committee of nine, and we, we meet... Uh, about once a month, we have our annual golf day in, in March, and then we um, have our reunion day during the year, our luncheon, and then hopefully we'll come up with something else. Uh, we've got the past players uh, best and fairest award, which we uh, introduced last year, so that w that was uh, went pretty well. So we have about four or five functions a year, but of course we're mainly raising money for the club, which we throw back to them, and they can put into their takings. And I know the boys are appreciative of the ground that's been thrown over the bar a couple of times on Mad Monday. Oh, yeah, look, that was sensational. We passed the, the bucket around. It was a bit like old days. You know, passed the bucket around. I think we picked up a couple of thousand they uh, put to their Mad Monday. So, but, yeah, no, that, that was, it was great to do, be able to do that. And, of course, this tradition playing against uh, clubs from other leagues is not new. It's going back several years. I think the days of the uh, old Escort Cup. Yeah, look, uh, I can remember playing at the, uh, the Lake Oval well, I think we played against New South Wales and then we won that, so we went over and played Norwood and um, over in Adelaide. And yeah, we, we've played in a number of these nighttime, whatever they're called now, Fox Cup and whatever it was called back then. But yeah. And what do you think it is for the boys tonight, uh, having the experience coming up against a club from a like-minded competition being the Sandfall on such a venue as the MCG? Oh, what a, what a thrill to be able to play on the G. You know, I think, uh, and what it'll do, it'll give the club you know, a lot of kudos to, to be on you know, live TV tonight and, yeah, to mix it with these teams in the interstate, yeah, it's, it's good. It might be good for the players to play during the week, <laughs> then try and fun up on the weekends, but you know, it's going to be great. No way, they're 20-year-old blokes. They're used to hanging out this late at night, so everything's OK. And just before we let you go, the Past Players Association, how's the membership looking? And, and for those members that may have lost contact, how do they get back in touch with the Past Players Association? Uh, look, we're, we're trying to target 100 members this year, but uh, if they haven't re-signed, Gary Bryce is the man, and if you haven't, if he hasn't caught up with you, he'll catch up with you. But we're trying to target 100 past players and officials as members. <laughs> I guess a word best used is shell-shocked. Uh, it was a good opening 10 minutes for us and then something happened in the third quarter. Yeah, I think you're right, Pete. And look, certainly first quarter statistics will say we probably should have been six goals to one, I reckon. Uh, that They certainly got momentum prior to half-time when they scored those two goals in about 90 seconds, I think. And from that point on, it was just one-way traffic, especially out of the middle. Uh, we couldn't control their on-ballers and they just pumped it in relentlessly really and I think it ended up being something like 12 goals to probably four in the end and two of those were in junk time in the last quarter so there was evidence, I didn't think we trained well so it's the old probably philosophy, you train well, you're playing well but I didn't think they did that last night and also too when you get away from the simple core values that we have you're going to get your pants pulled down and uh, all credit to West Adelaide, I thought they ran very, very well forward they were very physical they were able to construct enough good play to make us look like fools to be honest and um, I really think there might have been maybe two or three contributors on the night and if you're going to do that in a game like this on national TV you're going to get beaten and that was what happened mate 
But some of the boys have been questionable passing, particularly with the dewy conditions. Yeah, I think, yeah, you try and create something. So I'm not sort of overly concerned about that, to be perfectly frank. What I am more concerned about, though, is a unconditional approach on the ball, not conditional. And we were very conditional tonight. And I don't know where that was because we did have a game on Sunday to uh, come up to. Or the fact of the matter is we were shell-shocked, as you said. So what you tend to do is you go very much into your shell. You don't play a brand of footy, which is counter-attack. You just basically allow the opposition to dictate the terms. And once they got on top of the middle, in the middle, once they actually got on top with their ball use coming out of our forward line, we couldn't lock the ball in. Our tackle count went down and uh, we basically became 18 or 19 non-contributors, really. I guess the worrying sign was the counter-attack. They managed to open us up through the middle. Yeah, we look slow, and you certainly do that. Our uh, two-way running was very poor, and we always wanted it to be, I think, in our own terms in relation to where we ran, and on our own terms in relation to how hard we worked. So that's disappointing, and I don't tolerate that, as I'm sure you know. And tonight, you walk away from this game saying you damaged your brand a little bit because of that uh, competitive Port Melbourne spirit, which we play. But this group didn't actually come to play their part in what we needed to do. So there'll be some guys that will um, basically find it difficult to get into the seniors now on what I saw tonight. And uh, that's just being tough, unfortunately, at selection. So if you're going to get a game, you've got to earn a game. You don't get it gifted at Port Melbourne. Batsanis and Valenti both trying to work their way back from injury as well. How did they perform? Oh, so, so I would have thought, Pete. I think Shane was marginally better than Nathan. And it just goes to show that there is absolutely no replacement for games and playing and training. So I thought they both were pretty much along the lines of what nearly everyone else was. I thought Tom Gordon at least took the game on and had some run and dash. Danny Hughes and Bill Burston were two forwards that presented reasonably well at times. Josh Mewling, I thought, was all right in the middle of the ground. But I'd really struggled to get too much else out of a... Um, in relation to a positive performance. I guess the strange uh, rainbow at the end of the day is that we, being out of the Foxdale Cup, do at least get two extra buys throughout the season now. Yes, and you're right. And look, your mentality has got to be about how we get better and we'll use those weeks now to plan. We know that we're not going to be playing in the Foxdale Cup, so that was always a little bit of a oh, what about if it did happen. But now we definitely know after being embarrassed tonight that that's not the case. So we'll plan and prepare for North Ballarat on Sunday. We've got a huge month coming up with North Ballarat, Geelong, Collingwood and then Bendigo to finish off that block. And it'll be imperative that we certainly get straight back on the horse and our performances have got to be indicative of Williamstown and not indicative of what we saw tonight. And just before we go, the coaches were locked away for 45 minutes tonight. Plenty, I guess, to discuss ahead of Sunday's games against North Ballarat. Yeah, it is, Pete. It's, look, it's a very, very short turnaround. So I was trying to get a bit of a, a heads up on what the guys were thinking for the rest of the week. Uh, Greg Ryan, obviously, is a coach of the development team, so who he thought was better players for his uh, game against Williamstown. So there'll be some selection changes. Chris Kane will be right to go. So we've got to work on what we need to do to get the best possible combination because Ballarat are going to be very, very tough. He's a fantastic coach, Jared Fitzgerald, and he doesn't like losing, and uh, their start hasn't been what he would like. So for us, because of our poor percentage, our games to win become so vital, and we've just got to keep planning each week as it comes. We know what we've got to do, but it's a case of implementing that and um, not taking the foot off the throat and how hard we need to keep working and what the opposition are going to try and do and what we need to do to them. Borough TV is a Port Melbourne Football Club production.